Howdy y'all, it's Aaron here, and in this episode, I'm pumped, I'm pumped, do people still use that word, to answer the question we get a lot. How do you set up your first Facebook ad as a clothing store? Also, this is going to be great if you've set up your campaigns before, but had little to no results. As always, make sure that you grab something to take notes with and stick around until the end where I'm going to share with you how you can run successful ads without using interest targeting. All right, guys, so number one is to focus on creative. If this is your first time setting up your ad, which I assume is true since you're watching this video, and if not, then I want to reiterate that your creative is the singular most important part about setting up your ads. If you do everything else incorrectly, but you have an amazing ad, there's still hope. Facebook's sole purpose is to keep people happy and engaged on their platform. They literally profit off of attention. So if you can't create an ad that adds to their, right, an ad that adds to their experience, you'll pay a premium to be shown to those people. We suggest starting out with 10 pieces of creative. And when I say creative, I mean imagery, videos, graphics, whatever those may be, right? Those, those types of elements. You'll want to, right, and here's the key, right? If you're one taking notes, you should do this. You'll want to start out with three lifestyle photos, three graphics, three collection style videos, which are like short story, quick motion type of videos, i.e. flat lays, outfit changes, etc., or one TikTok style trend, right? And if you're looking for like, what is a TikTok style trend? Just go to TikTok and you'll start to scroll through and see something that is used over and over again, right? One particular sound, one particular dance, whatever, that's a trend. And, or go to the homepage on TikTok, you'll find something there, create a piece of content, and then use that for your ad element. Have fun, that's the whole point here. Next up, you wanna come up with at least five headlines and five primary texts. Now, primary text is like the text that goes above the ad. And just to give you an idea, right? So when somebody sees an ad, they're gonna see your imagery or your video or your graphic first, then they'll read your headline, then they'll, then they'll read your primary text. So if you're looking for like, where do I focus first, right? Focus on the creative side. And then not that copywriting isn't creative, but then focus on your headline and then your primary text. That's the order of importance of getting people to take action. So. When you come up with the five headlines and the five primary texts to test, you need to do that because there's gonna be a, an option for you to pick winning combinations. So we want as many options as possible. So once you have all of these, then we can get into choosing the correct objective. Hi right, guys, before we cover number two, I just wanted to say howdy. My name is Aaron. I'm one of the co-founders here at Bitbraining and we're an e-commerce growth agency that specializes in helping clothing stores grow and scale profitably online. Now, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of the latest strategies for clothing stores. We drop new content every single week. All right, so number two is to choose the right objective. When setting it up for the first time, it can be very overwhelming, but we're gonna make it simple for you. So there is something new that I've learned and that may be helpful for you, right? This is breaking news uh, as of this video, but there are two options I would recommend for you to set up your ads if you don't have the budget out the gate to go for conversions. Now, typically if you watch any of our other videos, we said go for conversions and let Facebook figure out the conversion, right? But now if we wanna figure out the winning elements for, and you've never set up an ad before, this is an, another option. But you will eventually start running conversion campaigns. Don't worry, you're gonna get there. This helps save some potential revenue on the front end so that you can find winning elements and add profit on the back end. All right, so let me walk you through the two initial objectives inside of Ads Manager. All right, so now that you're inside of Ads Manager, I wanna click this big green button that says Create, and I'm not gonna do this for every time. There's two options. The only difference here is whether or not you click Brand Awareness or Conversions. For this example, because we have so many other videos on conversions, I'm gonna choose Brand Awareness. Brand Awareness, right, it'll tell you right here, it's gonna share your ads to people who are most likely to remember them. Really, the only thing we wanna do is get in front of as many people at a broad audience, as many people as possible, because if you can do that and your ads start to work, then you know that you can start to focus on other objectives, right? So let me, bear with me here, right? So we're gonna choose the right objective and then I'm gonna label this correctly. So I'm gonna do this as our testing, testing campaigns, campaign, and I wanna do the name of the creator that we're gonna test here, which is gonna be New Arrivals. So New Arrivals. We're gonna test it broad, which we'll explain here in a second. And then the ad name, new arrivals, dynamic creative, you can label it however you would like. All right, so number three is adding in your creative. Now, typically I would choose my targeting first, but I wanna make sure that we spend the most time needed on choosing the right creative setup. 
And then we can talk through the targeting approaches, right? This is something that's important, but I wanna get back to it here in a second. So the first off, right, the first thing we wanna do, the easiest thing for you to do is have all of your ad elements in something like a Google Drive so you can easily copy and paste. Now, a little hack here is don't ever write your copy from inside of Facebook's ads platform or Meta, whatever it's called right now. You'll write the copy better on a Google document that will allow you to review and make quicker edits and help you fine tune, right? So if you, you see something and you wanna change it or copy and paste it or test different elements, you can copy and paste and then delete or add in or whatever else, right? So this is the way that I have it set up. So I have right here, all of the elements that I need. So all the photos, I got them all here. The videos, I have uh, the copy for the boutique and then uh, a graphic here, which is for whatever reason is down there. Anyway, so the copy, let me see here. I actually already have it pulled up right here. So here's my primary text and headlines. These are the heads up. There are more primary text and headline options. I just wanted to put in uh, some quick examples so we can copy and paste and, and just make this for an example sake. All right, now let's upload all the images to the dynamic creative setup. So going back over here at Ads Manager, like I said, we'll normally uh, do the targeting next. We'll come back to that. The only thing that we need to make sure that we do is turn on, we're gonna turn off campaign budget optimization for our creative testing when it is an awareness campaign. Typically, we are going to keep on our campaign budget optimization, which means that the budget is distributed at the campaign level. But for our testing purposes for this type of campaign, we will have a campaign as a hierarchy. Below that, it will be an ad set of broad, and it could have another ad set of broad, right? We'll talk about those. But then the ad element, the ad area, we want that to be dynamic creative. And I want to test different elements here. This could be a collection, it could be new arrivals, it could be sweaters, it could be jeans. And so I want each ad set to get a different budget so that we could test appropriately. Once we have the right winning elements, we'll go back to campaign budget optimization to scale. All right, so we're going back here. I'm not gonna have campaign budget optimization on. Let me go ahead and click the ad set here and dynamic creative, we've got to turn this on. So that's the only thing we're gonna choose first, All right? Gonna go and choose, choose this option, read this if you'd like. Basically it's just saying all of your campaign or all of your um, creative is gonna be put into one ad set. All right, now go ahead and click add. We're gonna choose our selected page. Scroll on down, I'm gonna use single images or videos. We have one of 10. I have already uploaded them, but like I said, have them into a Google Drive right? Put all of your stuff into one spot and then download them. You can pull them up from your computer. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and select the images. You can only select images at a time and then videos at a time as well. So let's see here. One, I'll select all the ones that I have here. Perfect. Hit continue. Select the videos. I have two videos as well. Let me see here. I don't think I've uploaded any videos actually. So let me pull here, pull up two videos. All right, so this is our collection style video. And this one right here is our TikTok style video. We'll add those elements in. Perfect. All right, so we scroll down. You can see here we have all the creative. We do need a website URL. Make sure you put that in there and it is verified with your ads manager, or sorry, with your business manager then add the website URL. Optimize for each person, do not turn this on. The reason why is I want it to go to as many people as possible and I don't really want it to pick the best elements. I want each element to be distributed evenly so that we can run a real test, right? Remember, our goal here is hopefully we get some purchases, but our goal here is really to be focusing on our tests, which will tell you what success looks like here in a second. All right, so our add our website URL, we have that. And then we'll go ahead and pick here, um, perfect. This button should always be shop now. And then let's scroll down, make sure that your website events are turned on, make sure the apps events are turned on, good to go. All right, now I'd like to go back here and add the headlines. So we have, go back over to our copy and grab our headlines, very easily done. It's copying and pasting at this point. Copy, paste, add a new option, copy, and then paste. And then, like I said, you can do that. You can do this up to five times, which I would highly suggest that you do. I'm just doing this for an example where there's three of them. All right, and then there we go. 
Next up, we have our primary text. There we go. Just click on it there, it'll give you another option. Primary text here. Another quick tip, use short copy, use long copy, medium copy, figure out what works. Your business may be a little bit different. Most of the time, right, it's shorter copy with great emojis and really punchy words um, that work the best. All right, let's go back here, grab this next one. All right, and then one more. Don't miss the latest trends at X Boutique. Insert your boutique or clothing store. There you go. Perfect. All right, so now we're back here. Like I said, we have all of our elements. So we have our headlines. You can add up to five. I added three here. We can add our five primary texts. I've added, I have four that are here. We can have 10 elements. I believe we do have our 10 creative elements. Again, we're focused on three lifestyle photos, three collection videos, three product photos, and one TikTok style videos. Once we do that, then we'll be able to start our test. All right, so just make sure that everything looks good, double check everything, and go ahead and click publish. Now, everything that looks good, you would go ahead and click publish. However, we're gonna go back to our targeting here in a second. But before I show you why interest targeting is an expensive marketing decision that you don't need to make and really was gonna set you up to not be successful here, I wanted to tell you about our free masterclass training for clothing stores that will walk you through the five pillars that you must have in place for your online store to grow consistently and profitably no matter what is happening in Ads Manager or going on in the world. If you wanna access that free training, check out the link in the description down below. All right, so number four is targeting. And let me walk you through why interest targeting and why people love it, but it doesn't really work. So interest targeting is mostly for large brands to spend a lot of money to get in front of people so that they can get data and get impressions at scale. They don't care about an ROI, they really don't. They have millions of dollars of budget and they really just wanna get in front of people, right? The, the byproduct is the sales afterwards. They want the information so they can make marketing decisions for other things that they're doing. So how does someone even get added into a quote unquote interest targeting? Well. Let's say you love Nike shoes and interact with that a lot. You would likely be added to that interest or maybe you like their Facebook page. Who else is grouped into that interest? Well, people who hate Nike but love Adidas or other shoes. They may mention Nike or talk about Nike or be tagged with friends who like Nike. But what happens is, so you could be tagged into a group or added into a group for an interest that you don't necessarily like. Technically, you could not like at all. And the crazy thing is, how often are these interest groups updated? The answer is constantly which is why you have an interest group, which is why when you have an interest group work really well out of the gate and then the cost will go up. Or three big brands decide to drop millions of dollars in that day on your interest and your ad cost skyrockets. So interest targeting is a dog chasing a tail. You'll never be able to satisfy Facebook or have consistent results because it changes so frequently. Facebook even announced it's getting rid of even more interest targeting options this year. And even last year, right, they told us how many interest targetings were going to go away and they got rid of even more than what they said they were going to. We need to get back to letting Facebook choose our audience based off of our estimated action rate, which basically just means good, which basically just means how good your creative will resonate with an audience. Think back to like the 80s or the 90s or even like before the pixel, right? We ran really good ads to an audience and the ones that resonated with it went and bought that product. That's what we're at. That's what's going on with Facebook right now. Then Facebook, right? We get back to the Facebook world or meta world, right? I try to use those inter interchangeably at this point. They will continue to show that amazing content to more people like that, right? So they'll find a group who likes your content and then show it to more people, allowing you to become more profitable and really scale. So I know this is a lot, but let me show you how simple it is for you to set up your audience targeting the way that Facebook suggests, the way that we suggest inside of Ads Manager. Back to the audience side of things. Now for this, I would suggest, I like this little chart. that's kind of, they kind of gamified this, this is actually somewhat new. Just $10 a day per ad set, right? You're going for interest targeting. Um, says you'll spend up to $12.50 on some days and less on others. Your average will be $10, no more than 70 per calendar week. Kind of interesting, cool. Um, something new. We don't really care about that too much. Um, all right, so age, we're focused on age, gender, location. For this particular boutique and clothing store, we're focused on 25 to 55. We're focused on women. That's predominantly who's gonna, fall, who's gonna be focused here. And then let me see, options. So United States, 
Uh, the only other option I would say is like, maybe we decided to focus on Dallas, Texas. That's where we're from. Shout out to Dallas people. So we may choose Dallas, Texas and do, you know, I don't know, within 50 miles. That is also a location. So age, gender, location. You may be focused on like, hey, this particular audience here. I want to maybe say all of Texas or Louisiana or whatever, right? Depending on your brand, but depending on your clothing store and you know your audience, right? If you're dominating Kansas, then, then run an ad in Kansas, right? The whole state of Kansas. We want this audience size to be, right? This is two to three million or two to 2.3 million. Really, that's a good size audience. I, you could do it a little bit more than that, right? Three, five. I've seen audiences that like if you have the budget, we'll talk about scale going to five to a hundred. But if you don't know your audience and as well, right? You shouldn't know that before we get into Facebook ads. But if you don't know your audience as well, you could still do the whole United States. Facebook will find the pockets and Facebook will give you the information that you need. All right, so that's it. Age, gender, location, show more options. Manual placements, I wanna get rid of the audience network. Um, I really don't care about too many other things like the end stream. I just wanna get it on the feeds or in article. Um, we just really want to see which ones are on the feed that are actually getting clicks because that's where you're going to have a little bit later. Show more advanced options. Great. I want impressions. Not really too much then. And then the standard delivery. All right. So that's pretty much it for the audience setup. It, it really is that easy. Don't worry about the interest targeting. I know it's going to be hard for you to do, but every time you choose an interest, you're paying a premium. So focus on broad. Try this test. Once the test starts to work, then you can move them to another campaign, which will be a video we'll put out a little bit later, or you can check out any of our other Facebook ad campaigns where we talk about conversions. Now, the number one thing you must be looking at here, right, is that you should be focused on the click-through rate. The only thing that you should be caring about or the only number you should be looking at is click-through rate because click-through rate will tell us that your ad is doing well, right? This is a creative test. And remember what I said, creative trumps everything else. So if we can get our creative to work, then we can move on to something else. And you're saying, hey, how do I test my creative? Well, once your ad is launched, right, we would go back through and you'd click publish here. Once your ad is launched, you would go back and we would choose this option here. So let's go ahead and break this down, right? By the dynamic creative element, I'm gonna go ahead and click image. You're gonna go into your campaign. You're gonna go through the ad set level once you have data. You're just gonna click performance and clicks, right? I just wanna see real quickly, what's my click-through rate? 3.15, awesome. But then you're going to go to the dynamic creative element, click the image, and then I want to sort by the best performing. All right, we can see very quickly right now that this is a winning element. I want to look at this image and I want to find out which elements are working the best out of it, right? Is it the lighting? Is it the pose? Is it the model, right? Break this down so you can start to find winning elements. But that's how you're going to figure out, is this creative test working? So. Once you set up your first ad, this is that testing campaign and you will continue to update that all over time. All right, y'all, I do wanna let you in on one major secret that is helping us give more data back to Facebook, right? So if this is your first time running ads, you may not realize that we had more data in 2020 than we did in 2021 or even 2022 and beyond. Um, but there are tools out there to help you make better marketing decisions. We're using a tool called TripleWell for all of our clients and really anybody else that we work with and just sharing with as many people as we can on our YouTube. And this powerhouse allows us to see the lifetime value for our customer. But what I'm most excited about is how quickly it will tell you when somebody is likely to make a first or second purchase. And this may be again new for you. I don't know. But right, let's just let's go back to the basics here. Your first purchase matters, but really how you grow and scale a business is a second and third purchase. And what TribbleWell does is it gives you an estimated action rate or an estimated option for somebody to make that second and third purchase so you can send the right marketing messages to those people at the right time. So if you want to find out more, check out the link in the description down below for TribbleWell. All right, guys, I'm wishing you all nothing but success. And right now, if you liked this video and you got everything set up and you're ready to take it to that next level and you want to go from zero to five thousand dollars per month right take you to that next level you got to check out this video right here this one is going to help you break down where to go after you set up your first campaign all right y'all have a great day and i will see you next time